Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Sportico Live. If the calendar flipped to September, that can only mean one thing, clean your gutters, yes, but it is NFL football time, and that also means my partner, Kurt Badenhausen, has been extremely busy talking with too many people to figure out what these NFL franchises are worth. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Genius Sports. We're going to hear from their head of North America, Steve Bornstein, a little later. But now we are privileged to be joined by Stephen Jones, the CEO of the Dallas Cowboys. And I think you're pretty familiar with how this works, Steve, and you helped us out last year. But that's what happens when you're number one on the list. You get to join Kurt and me time and time again. But before I turn it over to Kurt, because he's the smart guy here, I wanted to ask you if there's any truth to the rumor that you were the man in charge of flying that drone around your practice facility that has now been viewed like a billion times around the world. Well, uh, I, I know nothing about flying drones, so I, I can dispel that rumor in a hurry. It was absolutely amazing, though. And I, I, I do want to meet that guy someday. I didn't get to meet him, but uh, that was some great uh, piloting uh, done with that drone. And it certainly brought out the essence uh, of what the star is about. And uh, just an amazing start to that particular episode. And uh, certainly, I think it let our fans in and get a feel uh, for what the star is all about, not only from a, a football standpoint and what our players come to work every day doing, but also all of our fans that are able uh, who live in this area or visiting this area to come and see all the things that uh, are, are involved in the star and what makes it up. And now, Kurt, I don't want to step on you, but we always talk about when we're talking about valuations, we talk about media, real estate. These are ten poles. And Stephen, what you just talked about, that's it. You're, the stars are real estate play. And while drone footage might not be considered what we think of as traditional media, which is a, a linear channel and show me a game, this is all about new media. It's about delivering content, getting people to touch your brand, your team, your league in some way that appeals to them this managed to do it and you and you're married to the big ten poles well it is a, a an amazing mixed use development and i must say uh, we get asked many times how did you come up with with this plan well this plan's a work in progress and uh certainly as we move forward we look for opportunities we're probably about 60 percent of the way uh through the through the mixed use development and do have open property that we continue to look for unique opportunities you know, that will enhance the star. We are about to start on another uh, office building. It'll be a, a 320,000 square foot office building and uh, certainly excited about that. It'll bring more energy uh, to the star in terms of um, the people who ultimately uh, work in those buildings. They'll certainly want to want to be involved in all of our retail and use the Omni Hotel and Cowboys Fit and uh, obviously our, our, we, our retail. So, Certainly exciting times uh, here in uh, here in Frisco in terms of really uh, building the star and uh, look forward to, you know, what other new things may uh, come about as, as we look forward to the future. Yeah, I, I, want to dig more, I, I, <laughs> I want to dig more into the star. Definitely, Stephen, and thanks so much for joining us. But uh, just just starting with the valuations, uh, number one, six point nine two, as Scott mentioned, that's billion. Tick above the New York Yankees, most valuable sports franchise in the world this year, Dallas Cowboys. Uh, but but I've seen Jerry say before, your family's not selling. You know, take ten billion or more. So so something tells me six point nine maybe, maybe is not enough to get it done. Well, it certainly makes you feel good, and it's it's what it is. It's an evaluation, uh, but we have grand plans. I'll you know I'll never forget when I first uh, you know when Jerry first bought the team. I immediately uh, came on board. And one of the things he stressed and ultimately stressed to my brother and sister is, uh, you know, this is a stewardship of a team. You don't you don't own the Alabama Crimson Tide. You don't own uh, the USC Trojans or uh, the Florida Gators. Uh, we don't feel like we own the Dallas Cowboys. This is a, a fans franchise. But what we are, uh, what is our mission is to leave the franchise in a better place than uh, when we got our hands on it. And certainly uh, we're, we're, we're comfortable with what we've done up to this point. Uh, when you look at AT&T Stadium uh, versus uh, the, the, the great Texas Stadium that we had uh, when we bought the team, you look at the star, which is certainly a lot more than a practice facility now. It's a mixed-use development. Uh, we really think we're, 
we're doing some dynamic things with the brand, but really think uh, uh, there's going to be dynamic things ahead for us in the future in terms of bringing value, uh, not only to the franchise, but bringing a great experience, uh, content, uh, as you mentioned, things that our fans love to get their hands around and enjoy when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys. Well, you guys have been at the forefront. I mean, you brought up some of these trends, whether you're talking about selling stadium sponsorships shortly after, shortly after you guys bought the team, taking control of the licensing business, launching a hospitality company, getting an AT&T build, and now the star and its mixed use development. I, I guess what's next? I mean, are, are there, there are other avenues out there for, for Dallas Cowboys? Well, I think there always is in the NFL. Uh, we certainly got a commissioner who has great expectations in terms of growing the revenue pie. Uh, certainly you look at the things that are uh, in our future, uh, whether it's sports gambling and uh, the way that the NFL has embraced that. Uh, we're going to be one of the last probably uh, to be involved <laughs> in that from because uh, of the conservative state of Texas. I don't know how, how quick these uh, politicians will be to, uh, to legalize sports gambling, but we're certainly uh, have some great partners in that area. But I think uh, it's just the tip of the iceberg there. And uh, I just think uh, as we move forward, as I mentioned, we're probably only 60 percent of the way through developing the star. Uh, I, I really think as we move forward, you're going to see very unique concepts uh, that could really be great for our fans, great for people who visit the star and ultimately bring a great value to the brand of the star. You a little jealous of, of some of your other uh, teams that, that are a little further along the legalization path when it comes to gambling, because they're they're all fired up right now. Uh, well, we're the opportunity fortunate. that lays ahead of them. Well, we're fortunate to be here in Texas and uh, so many great things happen for business here. This is one uh, that's going to be a challenge for us, but we'll meet that challenge head on and ultimately think, uh, you know, good things are going to happen for us in that area. But in the meantime, we do have uh, partners who have stepped up, uh, people like the Windstar and people like that, that we're certainly uh, uh, making some great headway and uh, doing a lot of interesting things in, in terms of that particular area. Okay, how much, re Steven, sorry, how much revenue do you think on a league basis could be generated by sports gambling? You know, that's a tough one. That would be, uh, it's just hard for me to get my hands around at this point. So it wouldn't, you know, it really wouldn't be very edu a very educated guess. I think we're just now getting our hands around what it can be. Uh, ultimately, we think it's a big part of the content. We think it's going to enhance programming uh, for our TV partners, for our over the over the top partners uh, as we move forward. So, uh, you know, I just think it's the tip of the iceberg. And to ultimately throw a, a wild a wild guess out there on a number is probably irresponsible. I just uh, think we all understand how big it can be. I think it can bring a lot of entertainment uh, to NFL fans, uh, to people who like to follow our game, not unlike fantasy football, certainly, uh, I think, juiced our viewership and juiced interest in our game. I think sports gambling will do the same thing. Yeah, it seems to talking to the people uh, that we have, it's it seems that, that that stickiness with the viewer is really the place where the NFL can take advantage. I mean, the TV ratings are obviously the envy of every other sports league as it is. Uh, and you factor in gambling and getting people to stick around longer, uh, which has always been part of the, the NFL secret sauce uh, as it is but before gambling became legal, whether and you're talking about fantasy gambling uh, gets people to watch that Thursday night game may, when maybe it's not the most attractive matchup. Well, I think you're spot on there. And I think that's really uh, where some of the biggest revenue is going to be is with our TV partners, with our content partners uh, as we move forward really getting younger, the younger crowd in particular, which is, gonna, you know, has been a challenge for us as we move forward there. Uh, certainly have have grown up in a different day and time uh, than, uh, you know, the 40 to 60-year-olds. Uh, so there's certainly a challenge, but uh, some of the things that you do here, whether it's fantasy football, sports gambling, I think can play a huge role in really getting their attention. And as you mentioned, the stickiness to the content, uh, I just can really see where this can – go in some fascinating ways that really should help, uh, you know, get these young people's attention. Uh, you know, they like to, they like to multitask. They like to move around quick, but, uh, cause I've got, uh, I've got four of them and certainly live in their world with them, but, uh, and enjoy visiting with them about the way uh, they consume content, what interests them. But, uh, I do think these type of things are, 
are, are going to be paramount. I, you know, esports, it's a very interesting uh, concept as well uh, that the NFL is very involved in uh, in terms of looking at, you know, how, how you can put those two together and, uh, you know, create more interest uh, with these young people who love, uh, who are gamers, who love to game. So uh, we're certainly, uh, we have our own esports team and we're doing that because we think ultimately it can enhance uh, the brand of the Cowboys, the brand of the star, and ultimately uh, be something that's a very much a positive for our fans. Hey, Stephen, I use my 12-year-old and his buddy and his buddies as like focus, small focus groups. They're on the Xbox. They like to play the Madden. But my guy does not sit down, and this is not NFL specific. He will not sit down and watch an entire football game, baseball game, soccer game, you name it. He wants to see the highlights in the morning. He knows every major league baseball player, even though he rarely watches baseball because he plays the video game, the show. What have you seen works in transforming the younger set into not only cowboy fans, but ultimately football fans? Well, as I said, that's our challenge. And I don't know that we have any, uh, you know, hard, steadfast answers on that right now, uh, other than we know it's going to be a challenge and we have to continue uh, to look for ways with our content uh, to keep their interest. Uh, as you mentioned, to uh, have the stickiness to have these young people who, as you said, really want to just look at the fantasy stats and see how their fantasy team's doing and looking for quick highlights and, and things like that. We want them to stay entrenched in the whole game. And I think that's where sports gambling can come in when you can actually, uh, you know, do it in whatever ways uh, proper and at whatever level uh, you think you can handle financially, but uh, to be able to say who's going to score the next touchdown, what uh, what do you think is going to happen on this particular player? They're going to get a first down. Is Zeke going to – who's going to score the next touchdown? I think all those are things that can really have people uh, sticking with you in terms of watching full games. What do you well, I want to go back to the – Sorry, go ahead. The Cowboys. Well, what's the big difference maker? Because you all share your national revenue. So that's split evenly. That everybody is the same. You separate yourself by generating local revenue. What do the Cowboys do better than everybody else? Well, I think it starts with the rest it starts at the top. First of all, with Jerry, who is I mean, we're a sales organization through and through, and uh, he invented it in terms of <laughs> being able to sell something. And uh, his father was quite the salesman, and you know he's got a he's got a great uh, couple of lines when it comes to salesmanship. He said, what are the five things you look for in a salesman? He said, first of all, you ask for the money and the other four I forgot about. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's true. We, are a, we are a sales organization. I think we throw a lot of resources. We don't expect things necessarily uh, <clears throat> to land in our lap or show up at the front door. We go pursue, pursue the revenue. We also look for stickiness with our partners. Uh, if you look at our top eight sponsors, they've been with us. Uh, since day one, you look at people like uh, Ford and Miller Lite and Dr. Pepper and Pepsi and uh, Bank of America, the list goes on. Uh, these people have been with us from the start. And uh, so what we also do is we execute on tying their brand to our brand and they feel like, you know, they're getting the proper return on investment. So it's a, you know, it's just something that we've really prioritized in terms of the type of organization we are. That's why uh, you know, we have AT&T Stadium, which certainly started as a building that was going to be about 725 million bucks and ended up at a billion two. Uh, certainly the reason we do the star, we like to really give value back not only to our partners, but our fans. And it's certainly a priority. Well, I think people forget, though. I mean, you know, you see where the Dallas Cowboys are now with AT&T Stadium, the sponsorships, revenue is fantastic. We digging around the revenues this year. We, has, we projected the Dallas Cowboys are going to earn a bill, generate a billion dollars in revenue this year. First North American sports franchise to do that. And you're, you're talking about a couple of European soccer clubs, the only ones to do that. Nobody in the U.S. And so it's really that local revenue. But if you go back to when the team was first purchased by your family, losing, I think, a million dollars a month. So a million a month. Uh, so, so Jerry, this Jerry will be the first to tell you that because he remembers all too well uh, what incentivized him to make us a, a revenue generating organization, a sales organization. Right. So you guys have the brand and now devoted the resources to this kind of sponsorship. 
you know, so many, so many teams are in the early stages of these mixed use developments. So going back to the star, I'm wondering, because a lot of teams are looking at this, how the two feed each other, where, where the team feeds the mixed use development and then the mixed use development helps feed the business of the team. Well, we would start with, and it was very important, we picked a location real estate wise that I think whatever you would have put on this uh, piece of property would have been successful. Uh, we always were in the real estate business, not only with our, uh, with the star, but in, uh, you know, overall the real estate business and the key thing in real estate's location, 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 where we're in the hottest growing spot in North Texas, right here in Frisco. And, uh, it's the fastest growing, uh, office buildings are going up all up and down the tollway. And so it was going to be successful regardless. Well, then you throw the cowboy brand with it and you associate that with something that's already going to be successful in our mind, it supersized it. So then you can charge premiums for your office space. You can charge premium for your retail space. You can have a, you know, a really successful uh, hotel situation for our partners. Uh, certainly my, uh, Mark Mastroff and Cowboys fit. It's just been a, a home run. I think he'll tell you it's one of, uh, I think it's his number one gym that he's ever uh, been involved in. So, you know, you, you put, first of all, put it in a great location when you're dealing with a mixed use development and then uh, you utilize, which is what we sell every day to Pepsi, to, uh, to Miller Lite, uh, to Dr. Pepper, to Pepsi, to Ford. Uh, you utilize the fact that, hey, if you own the Cowboys, how would you sell a Ford truck? How would you sell a Miller Lite? How would you sell a Pepsi? And that's what we're doing in the real estate business. We're, we're putting those two brands together. We're putting those two concepts together. And uh, we think one plus one equals three when you do that. You can tell, Kurt, that that this is a man who has been trained under Jerry Jones very well. <laughs> that is two sponsor mentions. And I think Pepsi got a third. So they're going to be very <laughs> happy with that, no, no doubt. But you got to do it. I mean, this is yeah. how you drive value. But, Stephen, you talk about real estate and location, location, location. That's true internationally as well. And the NFL is now asking its teams to make proposals internationally sort of to increase your 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 home territory so to speak to international cities i'm going to guess the cowboys are interested in mexico city and are willing to commit resources there please tell me how do you plan to uh grow the brand outside the u.s and which particular markets are you looking at well it is a, uh, that's a great guess because you're right mexico is the market <laughs> and uh you so spot good. on so good and uh yes we'll commit resources not unlike we've done with the dallas cowboys and go in and uh you know get with smart people who understand uh those particular markets that we want to uh attack early on and uh that's one of the big things the nfl is looking for is they want to see that teams are gonna invest uh in these markets and we think it's a a great opportunity for us uh, it devils in the detail in terms of uh, how we work out all our deals uh, with the NFL in terms of, you know, bringing our partners down as well as, uh, you know, ultimately finding uh, potential new revenue with new partners. So uh, it, we're certainly looking forward to that opportunity. We think it's a, a, a great idea uh, for the NFL in terms of getting all 32 to get involved internationally. Uh, everybody has markets that they're interested in. You certainly imagine the bills would be interested in, in Canada and the list goes on. So uh, we just think it's a, a great opportunity and uh, certainly a great idea uh, by the by the group up at uh, uh, in the NFL offices in New York to come up with the, uh, this opportunity to really create something new. Now, I know the Cowboys and Jerry think big. Is there any chance you would push for exclusivity on a market? I mean, that always requires more. Or are you willing to share if somebody else wanted to say, take Mexico City and, and promote their brand there as well? And by the way, what's the ROI on this? Yeah. You're making investment. How do you see the ROI? Because what we're talking about here is how do you drive value for the, the entire entity? Well, I think at, at the end of the day, it'd be very difficult to have exclusivity, uh, you know, in Mexico or exclusivity in Canada or I, you know, I, I just think exclusivity in, in England and London where we're playing games, I think that's going to be very difficult. So I, I do like the approach that it's get in there and who's going to work the hardest and commit the resources to it. And I think like any startup business, the ROI is going to be uh, probably small early, 
but you're building something that hopefully uh, will build into something that, uh, you know, can be very uh, worth our while in terms of the resources we commit to these particular markets. Well, we've been hearing for decades how the international, how the NFL wants to grow internationally. And between this proposal and then sending basically all the teams outside the U.S. over the next few years, it, it feels like there's finally some teeth behind um, that international push and and trying to bring America's game to the world. Absolutely, I think uh, you know everybody wants to be global. Uh, at the end of the day, certainly. Uh, you know, American football has historically been tied, you know, and it's in the big ways just to uh, our country. But uh, I do think you're starting to see the interest. Uh, we certainly have markets that there's more than others, whether it's a Germany, whether it's a Mexico. Uh, we certainly have, you know, we have a program now where every team has an international player uh, that they can keep on their practice squad for two years. And uh, we certainly got a, an interesting offensive line prospect who's done nothing but get better uh, since he's been here. And I think those things are of interest too when, you know, people see that type of success. But, uh, you know, you always are looking for the opportunities, especially as uh, this content, as you grow, grow the eyeballs and you create this content, it's important that you uh, have touch points in, in these countries. You see, what was your take on the TV deals? Everybody oh, always talks uh, 2X, 3X, 4X. This was, you know, we're talking about $115 billion in TV contracts. By the way, a seven year out so you can survey the landscape and see where things go. Let's see if the fangs get involved, Amazon streaming. But do you get a sense at all that there's a plateau in what these companies are willing to pay for media, which is the number one revenue driver? Well, I think the deals speak for themselves. Obviously, uh, Commissioner Goodell, his staff, uh, along with the uh, broadcast staff, which Jerry serves on with uh, Bob Kraft. And uh, I think the deals speak for themselves. And you're certainly seeing new players uh, and certainly new ways that these, in particular, the one we've been talking about, uh, you know, for the last 15 minutes is uh, how these young people are going to consume their content. And uh, uh, certainly we need strategic partners when it comes to that. We certainly uh, uh, have had great response from our traditional partners. And uh, I think the deals speak for themselves. And now you have one deal left to go, uh, Sunday ticket. And that, now we're hearing uh, the NFL media hire Goldman Sachs or the NFL hire Goldman Sachs to sell NFL media. Is there some symbiosis there where, where you look at Sunday ticket partners and um, who potentially might want to invest in NFL media? Well, I just think that's uh, what, what I just mentioned. There's so many great strategic partners out there that could really help NFL media grow and uh, be strategic and, uh, you know, give them the incentive to think outside the box along with us and grow the pie. And uh, that's another uh, situation there. Obviously, Jerry's that's a, the broadcast committee and Jerry's been very involved uh, in that particular deal as well. So, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of work to be done on that end. Uh, certainly, there'll be more to come on that, but it's a exciting, exciting project. I think one of the big advantages of the NFL, Stephen, and correct me if I'm wrong, and I don't think you will, is that all the teams are cash flow positive. You don't need to knee jerk anything. You can sort of, as an NFL owner, sit back, survey the landscape, see what works, tinker, decide, do we want to jump in? And I'm going towards private equity investment in sport. Some owners needed liquidity, maybe the core business coming out of COVID. Um, the NFL, as of now, has not wanted such ownership. Are you a proponent or uh, are, are you against or are you a wait and see? Let's see what happens elsewhere. Just adding liquidity into teams from like, yeah. private equity or other sources. I would say uh, right now the Cowboys are, would not be a proponent of it. Uh, but at the same time, just like anything, you always have to keep your eyes wide open and see uh, what the opportunities are. Uh, the landscape's going to continue to change, as we all know. Hopefully, uh, you know, these media, as you mentioned, uh, you certainly didn't see any plateauing in the media deals. And uh, as these things grow, there's going to be more opportunities, just like we're working uh, with with NFL media. And um, we're certainly open minded. But right now we uh, we we like our system the way it is now. How much more revenue? I know I'm going to put you on the spot. This may be one that I, I need you to kind of project for me. 
but how much more revenue? And so you're certainly not hurting for corporate partners or fans. We know that. But if the Dallas Cowboys win the Super Bowl, <laughs> I'll, I'll pause for a moment and allow you to bathe in that, marinate that, that sense. <laughs> but if the Dallas Cowboys I want that win, for the trophy and the ring a lot more than I do the money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet. But it's, a nice, it's nice to know that the money will follow. Yes, what it will. is a Super Bowl championship worth in revenue to the Cowboys? You know, we've we've used such numbers as, you know, 50 percent going forward. Ooh. And I think it, uh, you know, it, it has such an effect uh, when you win a championship. We saw it when we first bought the team, you know, how how people just get even more excited. They pull uh, they pull their cowboy jerseys out of their drawers. Uh, they were closet cowboy fans because we weren't winning. And then you win and you know, here they come. So, you know, that that may be uh, a little aggressive, but at the end of the day, there's no question uh, winning championships uh, certainly, I think, affect uh, your revenue uh, and your, uh, you know, if you will, your long your, your long term in terms of uh, people willing to commit and, and be a partner with the Cowboys going forward. Well, we certainly saw the Tampa Bay Buccaneers get a nice bump, uh, whether it's merchandise sales, season ticket sales, uh, increased prices. Uh, I, I want to touch on that sponsorship idea because, again, you guys have been so much at the forefront uh, from some when you first bought the team when it comes to uh, sponsors. But, but how has that business changed? Uh, in terms of what you have to deliver to your partners and how it's as, as we not said, just putting your name on a on a sign anymore. Yeah. It's, it certainly has changed. Everybody's more sophisticated. We've certainly, uh, you know, our our people uh, who work in our sales areas and uh, you know our our account execs. Everybody knows one, you got to execute, but two, you got to you got to have a sophisticated uh, presentation this day and time because people are looking for a return on investments when they invest with you. And, uh, you know, the sponsorships uh, money, certainly, whether it's at a league level or a club level, certainly has, uh, you know, really uh, escalated in terms of uh, uh, what people are paying now to be involved, whether it's with the NFL or a team. And uh, they certainly expect to see what their return is going to be. And, and we certainly expect that to be the case. And, uh, uh, that's why it's very important to execute, very important to make them feel like they're getting value for their spend. And uh, I think our team's done a great job of doing that. All right. Well, Stephen Jones, CEO of the Dallas Cowboys, congratulations, number one again. We appreciate you giving some time. And I hope you stick around because we've got Steve Bornstein from Genius Sports, our sponsor, and Kevin LaForce from Redbird Capital, used to run the private equity arm over at the NFL. So we're going to talk a lot about that media and how the NFL and its teams can help drive revenue. Stephen, thanks so much again. Hey, tell, both, uh, tell both those guys I said hi and uh, two of my favorites. You got it. Will do. Thank you. Thank you.